If fueling choppers in the air seems to be a very challenging task, consider transporting gases on massive ships. If you are as curious how these giant sea vehicles fuel themselves, you just landed on the right video. The most popular method of transporting gas is by far shipping it abroad. Transporting these gases by ship is frequently the preferred and in some cases the only option when plants and fields are located in remote places. In order to facilitate transportation of gas between the liquefaction plant and the site of regasification, these gas ship serves as a crucial link in the gas value chain. Do you want to know more about what this gas is? Hey there! Welcome to another episode of High Technology. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you would get updated when another mind-blowing video like this comes up. Today, let's examine some of the trickiest strategies for transporting fuel through the busiest shipping lanes in the globe. Nearly a third of all maritime trade is carried out by ships carrying fuel. The world's fleet of tankers that transport crude oil, gas, and petroleum products has seen an 83% rise in capacity over the past few decades. Building pipelines would be too expensive or unfeasible because many places that depend on energy are located far from gas deposits. Many businesses today employ a virtual pipeline concept that makes it possible for people who are not linked to the grid to consume natural gas. Gas can be cooled to a liquid through condensation which reduces its volume and makes it easier and safer to store and export abroad. Onboard ship handling and transportation of liquefied gas cargo presents serious potential risks to the crew and to the environment. Everyone who works on a gas carrier or terminal on land must be aware of the risks, have the required training, and use the essential caution. There is always a chance that gas will be present in the atmosphere, especially during the loading and unloading of liquefied gases. When the ship is gassing up or being gas-freed, when a cargo pump or pipeline is open for maintenance and compressor rooms within ballast tanks and in void places and double bottom tanks next to cargo tanks. The liquid form of natural gas is known as LNG or liquefied natural gas and it is kept at a controlled temperature. The cyrogenic temperature for liquefied natural gas or LNG is negative 162 degrees Celsius and it occupies around 1600 of the volume of natural gas in its gaseous condition. This makes ship transportation efficient. LNG is distributed from its source, which may be a liquefaction plant or an import terminal distribution hub. The LNG is then kept in the cyrogenic ISO containers that are then transported to the regasification station where it is vaporized for usage. Once LNG has been put into containers, they are transported to the port of departure where they are lifted onto a supply vessel using heavy lift grains. To keep them steady while being transported by sea, they are carefully secured onto iron brackets. The ship's crew performs an examination before setting sail for its destination. The containers are taken off the vessel after it docks at a nearby port and then driven on trailers to the region satellite LNG facility to finish the transfer. Following this charge at the facility, LNG can subsequently be used via the nearby pipeline network. LNG carriers are a different mode of fuel shipping by water. Due to LNG's exceptionally low boiling point, shipping by sea calls for sophisticated technology such as tanks composed of materials able to resist extremely low temperatures. These alloys of fair nickel, stainless steel, and aluminum have extended Extensive thermal insulation covering the exterior layers. Nevertheless, some of the cargo is still impacted by the weather and naturally vaporizes while being transported. The vessel's fuel source can be the boil off gas. In order to avoid accidents during handling operations, LNG carriers are additionally outfitted with emergency shutdown mechanisms and turbine engines may run on vaporized gas. Weekly fire drills and other firefighting actions are essential for the personnel on board the vessels due to their dangerous nature. Pipelines connecting to shoreside facilities are used used to load and discharge. While receiving terminals include equipment to regasify LNG, loading ports are set up to liquefy gas prior to landing. According to the International Maritime Organization or IMO classification of LNG vessels, LNG ships are frequently divided into categories based on their tanks. The IMO classification normally distinguishes between integral tanks, which are structural components of the ship's hull and independent tanks, where the tank is not a part of the ship hull and is not essential to hull strength. These primary categories for LNG ship tanks can once more be further separated into many types. Type A cargo tanks have a design that is based on traditional ship structural design, have a tank layout that is very similar to that of an oil carrier, and have a tank design pressure less than 700 millibar. Type A tanks are required by IGC code to have a full secondary barrier to stop leaks for at least 15 days. Additionally, Type B has either the feature of a prismatic IHI SPB tank or a spherical MOS tank. Unlike Type A, 
both require a partial secondary barrier but function at pressures lower than 700 millibar. Last but not the least, Type-C is built to operate over 2000 millibar without the use of a secondary barrier and is based on the pressure vessel code. Due to the lack of a secondary barrier, leakage is detected by a change in the gas composition in the hold space, which is fitted with detecting sensors. These tanks can have a cylindrical, bilobe, or spherical shape. The floating transfer terminal, a self-propelled barge that shuttles between LNG boats moored up to 26,000 feet offshore, is one of Seaborne's more cutting-edge modes of transportation. The barge is used as a base for a hybrid hose handling system that enables a safe and secure connection with the LNG carrier. Using cryoline LNG floating houses, the fuel and boil-off gas are subsequently transported from the barge to any shore plant. With regard to safety flow rate and operational availability, the technique combines high levels of flexibility, dependability, and prolonged service lives to completely meet the offloading needs of LNG operators and contractors. The practice of LNG bunkering or providing a ship with fuel for its own use allows for the transfer of LNG from one ship to another in particular circumstances. When compared to heavy fuel oil, marine diesel or marine gas oil used to refuel ships, using LNG fuel significantly reduces pollution. Both at sea and in the port, LNG can be bunkered. When it comes to ship-to-ship -ship transfers in the Arctic, two ships steam at a leisurely speed before connecting with one ship at anchor and the other coming up behind it on its own or with the assistance from a tugboat. The crews of the vessels communicate with one another by sending messenger and mooring lines while keeping a constant distance or making a slow side-to-side -side approach. Following the connection of the gasoline hoses, the entire process is overseen from inside the vessels. In addition to the more ecologically friendly LNG, crude oil is also widely used throughout the world and is typically transported by vessels known as oil tankers. Many tankers may now be loaded straight from offshore oil fields. They moor close to a gantry buoy or turret to accomplish this. Modern tankers are designed with one point of mooring at sea loading in mind. Crude oil can be loaded into a tanker from a variety of offshore facilities or a conventional oil terminal through the midship manifold. An inline swivel is used to transfer the oil to the vessel's piping system. The separate buoy will float in an equilibrium position when it is ready for a new connection. The biggest ships are crude oil and petroleum product tankers. Small coastal vessels under 200 feet long with a carrying capacity of 1,500 to 2,000 deadweight tons to huge ships over 1,300 feet long with a carrying capacity of up to 550,000 deadweight tons are all included in this category. The combined weight of the crew's fuel, lubricating oil, and other supplies needed for their survival is referred to as deadweight. Air refueling is a wholly unique technique that is only performed by a few nations worldwide. In the most volatile regions of the world, air tankers are essential for maintaining military operations and supporting missions. At a height of more than 20,000 feet, more than 50 feet separate two aircraft moving at speeds close to 400 miles per hour as a tanker supplies another aircraft with gasoline for the mission's continuation. The probe and drogue method which is easier to adapt to current aircraft and the flying boom which allows a faster fuel transfer but necessitates a dedicated boom operator station are the two main refueling technologies. An aircraft that carries fuel is a tanker, whereas an aircraft that receives fuel is a receiver. The pilots of the two aircraft gradually drew closer to one another as the aerial refueling process got underway, but they kept a distance of about 100 feet between them. The boom type probe is plugged into the receiving aircraft by the probe operator. The tanker operator cannot connect the boom until the receiver's pilot has opened the refueling receptacle. There are a few notable aircraft in the US Air Force that are built to handle the refueling mission with ease. One such notable foreign aircraft is the KC-135 Strato tank, which provides the US Air Force with its primary aerial refueling capabilities. The flying boom technique is used by a dedicated operator seated at the back of the tanker. He fits a telescope tube into a small opening beneath the front of the receiver plane. However, there is a drug in the shape of a shuttlecock that can be used to refuel some types of aircraft. What do you think about LNGs? Do you think cyrogenic liquids will be the future of fueling gigantic ships? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. That would be a wrap for today's video. We hope this has been amusing to you. If you enjoyed watching, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button together with the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. This has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting-edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. We'll see you on the next one.